Well, it's a real honor to be able to present some of my work here at the Britain Museum. I'm grateful to uh, Ken and Barbara and the entire staff for putting it all together. So first off, thank you for that opportunity. Uh, it's a real honor to be part of this beautiful museum and, and to be surrounded by such remarkable art and to be part of it for a while. I've been in Wyoming for, uh, I taught at Northwest College for 37 years. So essentially my entire career, I've been working here and uh, retired from teaching about two years ago. Uh, this body of work in particular is referencing uh, a class that I did teach while I was at Northwest College with a colleague, Burt Bradley, who's a writer and poet and great friend. And he and I put together a class that uh, initially was called Ways of Seeing because we had a lot of students in Powell uh, at Northwest College who would say there's nothing here to draw. And so we would take them uh, out into the town of Powell and we began by just going to coffee shops and sitting down and drawing and writing with them. Uh, and that eventually led to this class that we called Art and Writing in the Wild, in which we would take students, uh, probably anywhere from 25 to 40 students, up into Yellowstone Park, into Sunlight Basin, and uh, we would teach writing and drawing. The students would exchange their work. We'd go out for three or four days into the basin and, and sit for an hour and a half, two hours in different places and draw. And these uh, drawings that are here represent some of that work that uh, Bert and I would work right along with the students. So these are just little studies, field studies that came out of that experience in which I would have my sketchbook usually working on these uh, nine by 12 size kind of drawings with pen and ink uh, on brown paper, uh, which I liked working with because it added that element that you could bring in some lighter values to heighten some tones that you want to work with. <clears throat> but of course, working in Sunlight Basin and, and up in the Yellowstone area, and then around Cody, where I live, um, there's a so much to work with, so much material, and uh, it's a little overwhelming. And, and sometimes we sit down and we want to draw the big picture and look at the, you know, the range of mountains and the, the plains and everything that's involved in that. And as we would tell the students, it's really important to just find your focus and simplify. And sometime within a little story is a big narrative. So uh, an example such as just a simple tree uh, with rocks, it kind of tells a story and there's a beautiful abstraction that emerges from that. And it's really an opportunity to just observe and see that everything is so unique that you never see two rocks that are alike or two trees that are alike. And so um, these represent that sitting along Sunlight Creek or going to Crazy Creek Falls or sitting in what we would call Moose Meadows. We had particular places that we would go to work and um, we would return to those again and again. So as you look at this exhibit, you'll see some examples of maybe some of the same uh, subjects that are repeated, and that would be drawn over a couple different periods of time where I would return to the same cracked rock and see the, how it's changed in reference to that tree. Uh, all the result of, of being a teacher. As a teacher, I think I learned more than the students because we always had the opportunity to reflect on the students' work and, and look over a student's shoulder and give them encouragement, which would cause me always to go back and, and reassess my own work and consider what I'm doing. Maybe not, not what I'm telling them that I, they should be doing and I'm not doing myself. So uh, it was really an opportunity. And most of my work, I should mention too, is figurative. I'm primarily a painter and I, I tend to work uh, large canvases, life-size figures. Uh, and I always saw it a challenge to go out and work with landscape. And so this was a departure from what would be the norm of my work, the body of my work. But it was a great sense of uh, being able to practice and, and kind of open myself up to possibilities. And you can't sit and draw outside without learning something every time. I'd always walk away feeling fresh and revived and take that information and somehow be able to assimilate it back into my own studio work uh, so that always the experience of being out in into the wild, which we called it, into nature, 
um, somehow found its way back into my figurative work in, in various ways that uh, I could never expect would happen.